This restoration is brought to you by an unscrupulous eBay seller. That's right, if you get into the toy collecting game long enough, you're going to end up using eBay at some point, because it is the one-stop shop for vintage toy collecting. And if you use it frequently enough, like we do at Retroblasting, you're going to run into the unscrupulous eBay seller every now and then. Unfortunately for us, one of the rarer pieces that we added to the archive was the victim of an unscrupulous eBay seller. That's the Matchbox Robotech Veritech Fighter from 1985. We better get moving, Rick. We still have a war to fight. I'm not ready for combat. Pull the control mark G and we'll switch to Guardian configuration. In preparation for the multi-part Robotech feature video that we'll be doing later this year, I needed to acquire a Matchbox Veritech Fighter, which would have been a glaring omission if it wasn't in the video. So I scoured eBay, I scoured the online retailers, and found a complete one with the box. It looked like it was in great shape. The seller said, it's complete, it's ready to go. I said, send it my way. When it got here, I found myself the victim of an unscrupulous eBay seller who had taken a Jetfire G1 Transformers head and had glued it into the bottom of the fighter where the actual cannon turret head should be. Now... When I confronted the seller about this, he claimed that he had no reason to believe that it wasn't the correct head because it was the correct design for the VF-1S Super Veritech. Now that's what this guy told me. If you know the difference between the head of a VF-1S and a VF-1J, then you know enough to realize that a Transformers head has been glued into the bottom of a Matchbox Veritech. So I wasn't buying that story from the seller. It's famously known that Matchbox sort of screwed up. They called it the VF-1S, which is what would have been the fighter that Roy and, uh, and Rick eventually flew. Uh, but the head underneath it was actually a VF-1J, uh, because Matchbox's quality control on this line was very sketchy. So what I had to do was figure out how I was going to get another fighter, because these are kind of rare, uh, to replace the head. And fortunately, my good friend Greg Tyler had one in his collection, and he was willing to uh, send it my way. So my buddy Joe and I got together, and we were going to hybrid a good one from the two. So let me show you what it took to do that. Matchbox Robotech toys are notoriously fragile, and the Veritech fighter is the poster child of that problem. Originally, the Veritech was supposed to be a transforming fighter jet that turned into the Mecha. But unfortunately, because of the lawsuit with Hasbro over Jetfire, they were not allowed to create the transforming toy for the action figure scale. And so what we ended up with was a toy that was designed to transform, and then at the last minute was bolted down and remolded so that it couldn't be undone. And in doing that, you have a very dicey situation because you have a very fragile uh, design on top of a very locked down result. I, just, I, just, I seriously just can't believe, though, that that guy did that. Yeah. All right. And then passed it off like he didn't know. If he's got other Veritex and he knows them by right. like, call sign and everything, the fact that he tried to play it off that he didn't know that that was the wrong head... That's very shitty. Is it glued? Um, one would think that by taking out the screws that secured it in place would release one part from the other. Now I'm really starting to wonder. It's coming out, but like... It's like a friction pin or something. Slowly. Joe and I had no experience with this toy at all, and so the first thing we had to do was kind of diagnose how it goes together. What Joe and I had to do was just stare at this thing for a few hours and figure out what we needed to do first. And we determined that the first thing we needed to do was disengage the legs. This is the push bolt, and the leg would attach would be pushed into these two push bolt mounts like so and when you snap them in place you're gonna to have to use pliers or something like that to get them back out so I don't want to do that here and then this back side 
with a screw in it screws into this hole right here so it would lock in right there so the first thing we had to do was gently pop open these two bolts on the front these two snap fittings and then undo the screw by opening the wing to access the screw hole. Man, they really locked this thing down. Yeah, they, they did. You can't make it transform ever. There it goes. Yeah, see, it just got another oh, snap man. spot there. Boy, that's kind of a nerf. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So now we know what we're in for on the next side. That that <laughs> leg is as big as jet fire. That's crazy. The legs are actually uh, screwed in place. Uh, you might be able to see this. I don't know if you can see it, but the legs are screwed in place underneath the, the main wings and then they are uh, friction snapped into the sides of the cockpit. So the first task was getting the legs off because what we found at the end of the process, you can see right here there is a screw hole uh, that allows you to disassemble the head without disassembling the fuselage. Unfortunately for us, the jet fire head that was glued in here was glued onto uh, almost like a uh, drywall post that was up inside the, the fighter. So we couldn't unscrew that one to get it out. So we had to find a way to separate the fuselage to get to the underside of, of the jet fire head to remove it. Okay, so do we want to take this off first and then move to the wings, or do we want to try to take the wing assembly off uh, and leave this intact? Look at that, they even got the hinges still on there. Mm -hmm. And then we had to undo two screws, one, two, to get this to come off. Now the challenge for us was that we had on this example that we were going to be using for the final, we had the stickers over the seam lines. So we had to very carefully sort of peel them away without ripping them, leave them in limbo, and then when we reassembled everything, lay them back down. And fortunately, that worked out just fine. And then I guess at this point, I will try to gently Try those stickers from their placement. Oh, you're going old school. Oh yeah, look, somebody, somebody's done this before. Yeah, because that was already kind of pulled up. <laughs> So, after we took everything else apart, right. this was kind of our immediate solution here. So we'll know going in on that one to just... Yeah, take the, you have to take the legs off. We do you? have to take the legs off. Yeah, they just snapped that in and glued it in place. And they were probably able to stuff that up under there first. What a load of crap. Yeah. Well, that's horrible. Here's your jet fire head. Yeah, cause this is what I really want, because it, it's probably not even usable. It's oh, crazy. Uh, or just like this. Because <laughs> the, the gray piece is separate. Oh, okay. The gray piece was separate. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> yes, that was that was very excellent. So it did exactly what you thought it would do. Yeah. Wow. So yeah.
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reassemble this, this uh, second fighter and get it back into a kind of condition where I can store it so that you can kind of see how everything goes back together. And I just want to point this out too. You can see where they had an idea. They were going for a transforming fighter. This is the arm uh, of the Veritech, the, the arm of Jetfire. Uh, and you can tell it was supposed to be two, but then when they got the lawsuit slapped on them, they just turned this into one solid hunk of plastic, removed any indication that there were ever fists there, and then they just glue fitted it onto the bottom of the uh, of the fighter. It's really a shame because it would have been an awesome toy had they been able to engineer it properly. They even left the rifle on the bottom and the rifle is removable but there's no robot to hold it. Alright, so let's put this thing back together. First thing we're gonna do is get the cockpit in place. I've got my two screws right here, one for the front, one for the back. They are the same size. Unfortunately, we won't have a head cannon to go in there because we only have one between the two. All right, so the next step, one of the great tips for keeping your screws from getting lost uh, when you're sort of gonna be between projects or you know you're not gonna fully reassemble something for a while, if you can, put the screws right back into the holes where they're supposed to go uh, for reassembly and that way you don't have to worry about tracking them down. This is something I need to point out. You see that? That is one of the common fail problems on this toy are the landing gears. The landing gears are terrible. They had a, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a pin uh, that was supposed to curve off of the back of the, it's up in here, it's hard to see, but it's up inside the back of the landing gear to give it friction when it comes down so that it locks into place. But this pin was about as durable as a toothpick. In fact, a toothpick would have been more durable. And so those three pins on all three of the landing gears often break off. And then what you get is you get this problem uh, with your Veritech. Now the disadvantage here is you're going to have to remove the leg from the fuselage before you make this repair. Uh, and if you reassemble it and then decide you want to do it, you're going to have to, like I said, go through the headache of getting the leg off again. So if you already have the legs off, it's probably a good idea to do this repair while they're off. But you undo the, the screws, and remember that the black screw always goes back onto the blue knee. Uh, it's not really a knee, I guess it's kind of a knee. Uh, you always want that black screw to go into the blue uh, plastic area. And then you remove the leg halves being sure to keep the lower part of the foot attached to both sides. Each half of the foot goes on a specific side. And then at that point, you can remove the landing gear. Now you have two options for this when you do the hot glue. You can either do the short side or the long side. I would recommend probably doing the long side because you're going to get more friction uh, in the end result when the glue dries. Uh, so you would just put a dab of hot glue in there, don't put the leg back in yet, you wait. And then once the hot glue kind of gets sort of semi-gelatinous and, and cool, then you can force the leg back into that hole and then you have friction. And then at that point you can reassemble uh, the leg. So if that doesn't make sense, send me an email uh, or post a message on our Facebook page and we'll kind of explain it in more detail. All right, I'm going to put this leg back together and we're going to get the legs back on this fighter. Make sure your foot is working. Now that we have our leg back together, the first thing we're going to do is line up this pin with this hole. It's sort of a, a guide rail, really, for the screw hole. And then we're going to gently put these over the push pins 
And I, I would say that the best way to do this is once you're sure you want that leg to go back on, push these pins in place first because it'll help align uh, this, this screw hole so it won't put tension uh, in the wrong direction. Kind of, kind of puts you on edge when you hear that, that plastic snapping into place, but as long as it's solid and you don't see any gapping going on, you're good to go. All right, now at that point, you want to flip it over. You want to unfurl the wings and get to those screw holes on the other side. Remember not to over tighten screws in plastic. You don't want to strip those holes because then you are in trouble. Especially on these matchbox toys where the plastic was really brittle and low quality. Alright. And that right there is a very nice displayable Veritech. Now the only problem we have of course are these pesky landing gear but you're just gonna have to live with that until you come up with another solution. Some people like I said use the hot glue method, some people tape them up and then if you can find enough of these little guys you can uh, add missiles to the underside. Now when you're on eBay remember that there was a re-release of this toy under the Exo Squad uh, label in the 90s and these missiles are yellow so if you see the yellow ones stay away because they're not matchbox original uh, the the color of the fighter itself is actually slightly different with a clear canopy but for the purposes of this resto we have two of the four so we'll put those on there make it look a little spiffy and if you wanted to you could actually add the rocket boosters the jet boosters on the back uh, I'm not going to because I kind of like the minimalist look uh, for this little guy, but uh, once we set it down here, now we have two Veritex, one complete and one, you know, in pretty good shape. Doesn't doesn't have all the parts, but certainly is in good condition for for what's there. All of the Matchbox Robotech toys are for the die-hard Robotech fan. I can't say I would recommend them to the casual vintage toy collector. They're rather rare, they're always expensive, and they're very fragile. So you have to have a lot of love for the property to put up with a lot of the headaches that you'll, you'll have with these toys. But as you can see, putting a little work into them gives you a nice result. We have one that's almost complete and very display worthy, and we have another one that is totally complete and ready for the Robotech multi-part feature, which is coming in about, uh, I don't know, six weeks. So look forward to that, and we will see you on the next restoration. It's Free Tie, the alien, and evil Chiron 2. They're out to capture Lisa because they're evil through and through. Robotech to the rescue. But with hunters racing to the scene, and Roy is by his side. First, they'll save friend Lisa, then send the aliens for a ride. He's my secret plan to save Lisa. Robotech.